Okay, so Mother's Day just happened last month, and my mother is very obsessed with Disney's animated Beauty and the Beast. She also happened to need a new phone case. So I decided to customize one with UV resin for her. Here I have a clear jelly phone case that fits her phone with a gold edge because my mom prefers gold to silver. And the first thing I did was trace it on a page in my sketchbook a few times so I could come up with some design ideas. I based one off of the magic mirror, one off of the rose, and one off of the stained glass window from the movie. After looking at the designs through the phone a little to get an idea of what they'd look like, I decided to combine the stained glass window and rose motifs. So then I set to work looking for a cylinder or something round that was about the same size as the phone case so I could make a large circle with my jewelry wire. I settled on this bottle of glue and wrapped my wire around it to make the circle, trimming the excess with my pliers. Then I stuck it down on one of these earthquake proof mats that I do not recommend using as they are too sticky and it's really difficult to remove things from them, which is honestly probably the point, but uh, anyway, I then did the same thing again, only I cinched it a little smaller to make a ring to go inside of the large one. After that, I started wrapping my wire around a pen until I had several coils, sliding the wire off of the pen before using my pliers to cut down one side, which produces several circles of wire. Then I cut the circles into quarters and laid them in the area between the large and small circles to make that stained glass window motif pattern. Uh, P.S. Tweezers were really helpful during this project. <laughs> Once that was done, it was on to the rows. First, I made a small loop at the end of the wire with my needle nose pliers. This became the center of the rows. Then I made an uneven sort of spiral shape. When doing this, I usually prefer to use two pairs of pliers to handle the wire. Once it's as big as I want it, I bend the wire inwards to create a sort of petal shape after cutting off the excess wire. For the next layer of petals, I make a small bend in the wire and then cut it off the length of the wire to make a little mountain-like shape. Once those petals are made, I did three in addition to the one that is attached to the spiral. I made a set of slightly bigger petals with a bump in the middle of each. There are four of those and I made sure to stagger them so that this larger row of petals where each one meets at the tip of a smaller petal. The last row of petals is even larger, and these ones have several little wiggles in the wire, I guess you can call them. Once I had it how I liked it, I arranged the petals in the center of the circle on the sticky mat, using my tweezers and getting it as centered as I could manage. Now, I learned my lesson from my first UV resin video for the Galaxy Charm, and I put down a layer of clear resin first. And to cure it, I have another new resin lamp. That's right, I am continuing on my quest to find a lamp that will cure resin hard enough that I don't need to put it on my dashboard or windowsill for an afternoon for a final cure. The first lamp I had was 6 watts. The second lamp was 36 watts. This one is 120 watts. It was the highest wattage I could find for not $300. So hopefully, with its fancy digital display and apparently super strong alien light powers, it will do the trick. So after curing the resin, I mixed up some dark blue resin using Tim Holtz Faded Jeans Distress Ink and filled in the space around the rose in the stained glass section. Then I used Scattered Straw Distress Ink to color some resin yellow, and I filled in more of the stained glass window motif. After curing, everything gets a second coat of the colored resins 
because UV resin shrinks when it cures, so each area develops a little indent in it that usually you want to fill in. Especially for small sections and things. Then I added a little clear resin to the back of the rose and put on some iridescent flakes so that it would sparkle even more. After curing those in place, I mixed up a small amount of black soot distress ink into the resin to make a dark gray color and added some shading to the edges of the flower petals. And you're probably wondering why on earth I left the flower clear. Well, originally my plan was to put some of this red cellophane paper from the Dollar Tree down as the red, since it is slightly iridescent and I thought it would catch the light and look cool. Yeah, the resin did not want to stick to this stuff, so I had to scrap that plan. So yeah, right here you'll see the flower is red, but that comes off later, so don't worry about it. Anyway, next it's time to lightly sand the clear jelly part of the phone case. It helps the UV resin adhere better because the rough surface gives it more places to hold onto. But the resin also fills all of the tiny imperfections, so you'll never know that it was actually sanded. Just be careful and don't sand where the gold is. I was a little careless and accidentally sanded some off. So I had to go back in and paint the edge with the gold acrylic paint before I put the final layer of UV resin on. Once sanded, I coat the entire back of the case with a very thin layer of UV resin and cure. Do not put the rose on yet like I do here, this is a mistake. While it's curing, make some flower petals as if they're falling off of the rose. It's basically just teardrop shapes, and you make the bottom round edge irregular instead of a smooth curve, just using the wires to bend it back and forth. And here you can see those little red slivers that are stuck on the case. It was the only area where the red cellophane I talked about before stuck to the resin. The rest all peeled off and made the rose not stick to the case. So I ended up mixing up some red resin and put a thin layer on the back of the stained glass rose after pulling off the disc of cellophane that didn't stick to the resin anyway. Add another thicker layer of resin and put the stained glass flower on as well as the falling petals. Cure it to keep everything in place, both on the front and then once that's set, flip it over and cure the back as well to make sure the stained glass part is secure since the color is pretty dark there. I just wanted to make sure the light really penetrated to adhere that section. Then I went in with the same red resin I mixed up for the rose and filled the falling petals. I have a darker version, which is the original red, and a lighter version, which is a small amount of the darker red resin mixed with clear resin to dilute it. I made a sort of gradient in each petal with the darker part being the edge of the petal and the lighter part being what had once been attached to the flower before it fell off. Cure that and then give the petals a second coat of red resin. Next I added some clear resin and adhered some glitter chunks in varying sizes around the background sporadically for a little more color. I also added some gold microbeads to the clear resin background. And finally I took some individual 2mm white beads that don't have holes and put a ring of them around the stained glass piece, one bead at a time. Once that was all cured I did one more decent layer of clear resin to seal everything in and keep everything from falling off of the phone case. And after curing this final layer, it was done. This was a new one for me. I definitely do not recommend these little sticky squares to do resin art on. I had to use a tool to sort of wedge underneath the stained glass and pry it off of the sticky stuff. And when I did that, it bent the wire in places and it sticks out a little roughly. And when I peeled off the stained glass rose, it bent the wire in places that stick out slightly unevenly. Because of the final coating of resin, it's not sharp or anything. It's just annoying. 
and I'm happy to say that this lamp seems to have done the trick. This case, more often than not, seemed fully cured whenever I tested it. I'll do some more resin things and keep using it to see if it stays true or if it's not as good as I think it is. But for right now, this 120 watt lamp wins the day. <laughs> Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the bonus giveaway video if you're watching this in June 2020. Every day I upload this month, there will be a bonus giveaway video. So be sure to stop over there and enter to win Copic sketch markers and a sketchbook and all sorts of other great things. Please like this video if you like UV resin art. Subscribe for more creative content. Until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye!